Darling, you send me. I know you. This cute little thing is the Panasonic Lumix LX15 or LX10, as you might want to call it if you're in the US. It's been my daily driver for about one year now, and uh, about all the vlogs that you can see on this channel are done with this since one year. The main argument for this camera is the price. It's 499 euros, including tax, which is almost the same price as the G7X goes now in the shops and about half of the price of the RX100, which makes it um, a very easy decision. You will need to make some additional modifications to this camera before you can use it as your daily driver. First, sound sucks on this one. So um, get a muff. Uh, I built this myself from artificial fur that you can buy in any textile shop that's uh, easy to get and some double-sided tape. Just don't forget to drill holes into the tape, otherwise the sound will be And uh, yeah, change it every two months because it, it's getting filthy and uh, people will ask you what this dead thing on your camera is, so to avoid all these discussions. Then secondly, you will need an ND filter. This is an ND64. This is definitely too dark. Um, it served well for the outside shots I took. Uh, and in Spain you will need it, but in Germany maybe, maybe not. And I use one of those Mac filter, magnetic filter holders. So you screw the filter onto this holder. It has a magnetic ring on it, really hard to shake off. So um, yeah, it's doing fine here. This camera is particularly slippery, so you have to add on some tape to make it easier to grab. So I put some tape here with a fold. It's just simple gaffer tape that you fold around and then you have this sort of grippy thing here. Also I added the um, pretty unusual but very helpful tape hack that uh, Casey Neistat brought in. It's uh, actually a piece of sellotape that you attach to the bottom of the screen so when you work uh, single-handedly and you have the other hand occupied, you can easily just open the screen and then look at your camera like this. It uh, really isn't that much of a... Works pretty well. And the last modification that I really consider doing is this camera as a vlogging camera might want to be placed somewhere because it's really light and it shakes in your hand. So you want to put it on uh, somewhere. So I attach this uh, Joby compact tripod that's underneath and you can just unfold it and fold it in again. It goes um, into this pouch, so that's fine. Uh, this is a Kuhlmann Ultralight Compact 300 pouch, so if you want to buy it, I'll link it below. This is a very suitable just belt pouch. You look a little, um, yeah, well, forget it. The image on this camera is outstanding for its size and for its price. Surely you will have to have a bigger camera if you're working professionally, but for vlogging and for all that, it is great. 4K up to 30p is stunning, I think. I never saw something like that coming out of a camera of that price and size. A little caveat on the 1.4 of this lens. The f1.4 only is applicable when you're in the openest position of the lens. As soon as you zoom in, if you go to the tele, it turns into a 2.8. So um, yeah, you will have to open it as wide as possible to really use the 1.4, but it's still very good. There are some setting changes that I would propose if you want to use this for filming. First you change uh, the settings for this wheel to ISO and then you change the increments for the ISO within the still image settings to a third increments, which means that uh, pulling around with this will only change the ISO by one third of the usual increments uh, when you have one of those clicks. As this camera doesn't support log, maybe it's good to use the natural image profile and change the contrast and the saturation to minus three and the rest to minus five, so that in color correction, you are able to obtain some um, space to work in. So what sucks the most with the Panasonic Lumix LX15? 
it's the battery. Those batteries from Panasonic last about as long as it takes you to get everything in shot and just before you press the shutter button it will give you flickering red lights and tell you the battery is empty. This happens to me on a regular basis. The problem is if you have extra batteries you can't put them in if you are on a tripod because some genius just put the tripod mount so close to the battery that you can't really open it without removing the tripod which makes it a little stupid so one might say well wait it has a USB charging port doesn't it what it has but while you're charging you can't film so that's a little stupid as I might add so Panasonic please fix that the next thing is the autofocus still if you're using Barry Maskell's setup changes it kind of gets a little better but actually I use manual focus on this camera mostly because I think I don't trust it that far but still for stills and for stationary shots the autofocus is okay if you're in a hurry this camera isn't for you because if you turn it on and then you press the record button immediately it doesn't record it takes the camera a while to understand that it has to be awake now and to work now if you press the button you can see it's recording fine that's great um, but always have an open eye to the red dot on your screen then during recording you might notice a certain level of noise and that's not only the lens trying to cope with your movement or something it's there all the time even on a tripod I don't know what it is and I couldn't turn it off yet but it really adds to your sound level in editing so be sure to use a compressor to get rid of it number five of the annoying things about this camera is it has a lot of programmable buttons how could this be something bad well it is when you have to hold the camera somewhere but there's not really a lot of space to hold it because it's just too crammed with buttons and also the touchscreen accepts every entry that you offer it so if you're walking around with this camera be sure to hold it somewhere on the outside which makes it a little hard to hold one more really annoying thing is the fact that if you use the high-speed video option everything goes to auto the shutter speed the ISO and even the aperture so it will be very noisy if you use high-speed video because obviously the ISO is going up to 6.4 under the flap that secures those connectors you find a HDMI and a USB port no sound connector that might be a problem if you are concerned about the sound from these mics if sound is something important for you then better don't go for this camera because the sound is not its strongest side other than that and the need for additional modifications to make it work as a vlogging camera this is the perfect vlogging camera after one year of handling it and having it with me every day as a daily driver I even shot some stuff that got projected on stage with that camera and I'll use it as my main camera because the best camera is the camera that you have with you and um, this one you have with you because it's really small and versatile I think this is one of the best cameras that you can buy right now concerning that the RX100 is a lot more expensive and the G7X is a great camera but it's kind of outdated without the 4K option so um, I think this is a great intermediate camera until Canon releases their 4K pendant to the G7X uh, maybe that is coming sometime next year or the year after next year Canon kind of hasn't been too famous for adding 4K capability. If you don't need 4K, maybe you go for the Canon, but um, if you want 4K and if you can live with the modifications, go for that one. So I hope you excuse that I didn't bring you a 
tutorial on projections but brought you a review and a camera that I use every day. I thought it might be useful and um, I hope it helped you decide which camera to buy or how to handle this camera. So if you liked it, subscribe below, give it a like perhaps, comment below with any questions and I hope I see you next time. See you soon. Darling, you.